Welcome to the University of Victoria Library's Digital Scholarship Commons video on best practices for leading active learning workshops. In this video, we are going to review pre-workshop preparations, the importance of the workshop introduction, keys for making the most of the hands-on portion of a workshop, and finally, how to wrap up the workshop. As an instructor, it's always a good idea to review the workshop materials, including the introductory PowerPoint presentation, before the class begins. This is especially important if the workshop is not one you have taught often or recently to make sure you remember the key points to cover. Arrive at the workshop early so that you can ensure that you have sufficient handouts and equipment for the expected number of participants and that the room is configured for the workshop's activities. Welcome everyone as they arrive and introduce yourself. If there are any pre-workshop requirements, like installing software on their laptop or creating an account, ask participants as they arrive if they have done this already, and if not, ask them to do this while they wait for the workshop to begin. Start by welcoming the group to the workshop and introduce yourself. If the group is not too large, typically 16 students or less, Ask each of them to introduce themselves. So maybe we could go around the room starting here and get a name, faculty, and one thing you hope to get out of the workshop today. Okay. Um, my name is Lydia Hibbing. I'm in German Studies and Humanities. And I came because I've tried dabbling in 3D printing before with free programs. And I thought it might be nice to actually learn something with someone guiding me rather than just YouTube videos. So. Yeah. For larger groups, you can provide each person with a piece of paper to write down their faculty and what they hope to get out of the workshop. The last item about what students hope to get out of the workshop is to help you tailor the hands-on portion of the workshop to meet the needs of the group, and more importantly, the needs of each participant. If you have a large group, make sure that during the hands-on portion of the workshop, as you circulate around the room, that you make note of what students want to get out of the workshop, and where appropriate, give them specific suggestions and assistance. Over the next five to 10 minutes, use the provided PowerPoint slides to quickly orient participants to the technology covered in the workshop, cover common pitfalls, and review safety information. The slides are helpful to make sure that nothing is forgotten or omitted. This is especially useful for new instructors. The last item of business before moving to the hands-on activities portion of the workshop is to introduce the activities by quickly describing them. Once participants have started working on their chosen hands-on activity, you should try to lead this hands-on portion of the workshop as a guide on the side rather than a sage on the stage. The general rules of thumb for in-workshop activities is to make sure that they are 1. Active Get participants actively engaged in skill development for as much time as possible. 2. Contextual. Help participants address their immediate problems or learning needs. 3. Choice. Participants should be given as much choice in activity selection as is possible during the workshop. 4. Differentiated. Allow participants to work at their own pace and to customize the workshop by choosing activities that meet their needs and are appropriate for the skill level they are at. Once participants have started working on their first in-workshop activity, you should talk to the students who have specific goals and suggest which activities would be most helpful to them in achieving their goals. This differentiated teaching method means that there is no forced march through the materials at the speed of the slowest learner. But each participant can choose the activity and speed that they are most comfortable moving through the activities with. When not answering questions or helping participants, it is often helpful to wander around the room so that it is clear to the students that you are engaged and available to assist when called upon. If multiple participants are having the same or similar problem, you might want to get everyone's attention so that you can let the group know about the problem, along with your solution so you don't have to repeat yourself over and over. By the end of the workshop, participants will hopefully leave having either created something of their own or something from one of the prepared activities.
As participants are getting ready to leave the classroom, let them know that they can come back for individual help if they run into problems. They can always drop in, but it's best to make an appointment. Also, encourage participants to fill out the post-workshop feedback form so that we can find out how well we did in meeting the needs of the workshop participants. Here are some key points to remember as you teach active learning workshops. One, spend time preparing before you lead a workshop. Two, make everyone welcome as they arrive and find out why people are taking the workshop so that you can do your best to meet their needs. Three, get participants to the hands-on portion of the workshop as quickly as possible. Four, make yourself available during the hands-on portion to assist and answer questions. Five, encourage participants to do the activities that will benefit them most. Help them get what they need out of the workshop if possible. Good luck and happy That's making. That's why it was confusing okay. so okay. it's, it's really unusual for someone to align that well. So good job, even though it caused you grief, you'll never forget it.